My name is Lisa Jacobson and I'm the President of the Business Council for Sustainable Energy. Council members are proud to be part of the Climate Change Conference here in Paris, France, COP21. The Business Council for Sustainable Energy is a coalition of companies and trade associations in the energy efficiency, natural gas, and renewable energy sectors. The United States is going through a clean energy transformation. Renewable energy, energy efficiency, and natural gas are the portfolio of growth in the energy sector. Not only do we get environmental benefits when we use more clean energy, we also get jobs and economic growth. The Paris COP provides an opportunity for governments around the world to show their commitment to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and using more clean and affordable energy resources. Hi, I'm Clay Nessler, Vice President Global Energy and Sustainability for Johnson Controls. Pleasure to be here at COP21 with BCSE and a delegation of like-minded companies all focused on clean energy technologies. Johnson Controls is a multi-industrial global company with operations in 150 countries. We're leaders in building efficiency, vehicle efficiency, and distributed energy storage systems. We've made a number of commitments associated with our participation here at COP21. We're active in a number of panels talking about the importance of building efficiency and energy systems efficiency and helping countries meet their climate goals. One thing we're very excited about is our participation in the UN Sustainable Energy for All uh, initiative. We're a founding industrial partner for the Building Efficiency Accelerator, and we're here with the World Resources Institute talking about how cities are joining on as partners and uh, de de developing plans, implementing policies and programs to um, basically reduce their environmental footprint in support of their nation's uh, commitments here at COP21. The U.S. Green Building Council is a nonprofit organization with the mission to transform the built environment to one that is sustainable for people and the planet. And we do this with our flagship rating system, LEED, which is the most widely adopted successful system in the world. And it's used now in over 150 countries and we're certifying 1.8 million square feet every day. We are really excited because this year marks the first ever Buildings Day. And this was a chance for us and the Green Building Councils around the world to come together and share our message that we know in our industry that buildings are the lowest cost, fastest way to um, implement efficiency and drive carbon reductions and to get that message out to policymakers here at COP. We're partnering here with ICLE, the National League of Cities and World Wildlife Fund to bring 11 mayors from the U.S. A delegation over to show what cities are doing. Cities have taken the lead in adopting policies like Green Building and LEED and others to um, mobilize solutions earlier and faster than some of the national governments. So cities are really at the forefront and they help show what's possible. The buzz around here is that private industry and cities are ready to move and will continue making progress. I'm Thomas Weber. I'm on the board of directors for the Business Council for Sustainable Energy. We have been participating since over 10 years in the climate negotiations and we're very excited to be at this essential COP21. Jupiter Oxygen is a clean energy technology company based in Chicago. We have been developing a technology that can effectively capture CO2 from coal-fired power plants. And we feel this is a very important solution, specifically in Asia, where coal will be necessary for growth for decades to come. One example that we are engaged in is a project just signed in Western China that will utilize our technology to capture CO2 from coal-fired power plants and the CO2 will be actually utilized for enhanced coal bed methane recovery that will cut back the cost of carbon capture and will be a showcase to demonstrate that carbon capture can be economically viable. I'm Jared Blum, I'm the president of the Polyiso Cyanide Insulation Manufacturers Association in North America. Polyiso are big blocks of rigid foam that are in about 80% of all North American commercial buildings and have the highest thermal performance of any insulating material you can buy. It's not a hard decision for us to be here. We sell products that will make buildings more energy efficient and therefore are gonna be participating in reducing climate gases uh, from around the world. 
we want to make sure that uh, any, any uh, policies and agreements that are adopted recognize that there are existing technologies like insulation, and in particular polyiso, that can help buildings and therefore countries achieve their goals. I think the most important issue here at COP21 is that the countries understand that the technologies are here, there needs to be infrastructure and the fact of uh, government support for these technologies, and there needs to be private financing. And once we get all three of those together, we're going to solve this problem. Hi, my name is Nanette Lockwood. I'm the Director of Climate Policy for the Center for Energy Efficiency and Sustainability at Ingersoll Rand. We are committed to reducing the emissions from our operations as well as those from our products. And that will result in the avoidance of 20 million metric tons by 2020 and 50 million metric tons by 2030. And this is as a result of our $500 million investment to develop new low carbon technologies for the air conditioning for buildings and transportation for food. We want to understand where countries are going, where their priorities are, and we want to understand what they're going to need going forward because we want to provide the technology solutions. It provides market certainty and it provides uh, a roadmap for us to follow. My name is Dan Delury and I'm president of the Wedgemere Group, which is a Washington DC based consultancy that specializes in some of the new technologies that are being injected into the electricity grid to make it smarter, more efficient, and less costly. Well, I'm here representing the Demand Response and Smart Grid Coalition, which is a group of companies that have the products and services that I just mentioned, things such as energy storage, demand response, grid automation, and microgrids, for example. Uh, there are a lot of new types of products and services that put into the electricity system will bring new efficiencies, and therefore emissions, out of that system but also make that system more resilient in the face of extreme weather events. One of the reasons I'm here at the COP is to try and help people understand that the electricity system shouldn't just be about building more power plants, regardless of the fuel that's used. There are other things that you can do to make the electricity system more efficient and therefore reduce the emissions on that system. And the word that we are starting to use in the U.S. is really the O word, and that's optimization. What you want to do is treat the electricity system like it has all sorts of sensors, controls, and all sorts of options, so that when you run that system, you can run it in the most optimized manner possible. The Business Council for Sustainable Energy provides a platform for our members to engage the, the global discussion on climate change. The 21st Conference of the Parties here in Paris is, is, is the foremost um, arena for action on climate change. The unique value that the Business Council for Sustainable Energy brings to the COP and uh, for our members is the perspective of clean energy companies that are doing projects on the ground in countries around the world. The Business Council for Sustainable Energy really look forward to um, taking the agreement that comes out of Paris and building a pathway forward for future business engagement.